Hello BuzzTouch friends. Today we're going to show you how to get your application out of the BuzzTouch control panel, down to your computer, and into Eclipse. Uh, and then once you get into Eclipse, that is the place that you go and manipulate it and run it and debug it and whatever you need to do to prepare it to get it to the store. Uh, this is a fairly simple process, not a ton of steps, um, and it usually goes fairly well. So let's see how it goes. First thing you want to do is bring up your application in your BuzzTouch uh, control panel. And uh, I've created a test application that I use. And you will notice, uh, and this is the BuzzTouch.com control panel, <coughs> that you have a, a menu list here. And on the left-hand side, one is called Download Source Code. So you want to click on that button. And then once, uh, once that happens, it will show you a number of options, one for preparing the code for uh, iOS and the other one preparing the code for Eclipse or Android. So you want to click on the Prepare Package for Download and it's going to go and prepare that package. And this is where the API call comes into play. A lot of people talk about uh, it's that API key that you need to be able to go out and generate the package. So now you have this download zip archive, so we're going to go ahead and hit click on that. And we will do a save. And it's going to save it. And we will save it in our downloads folder just so we know where it is. And we hit save. And so now it's gone out to BuzzTouch. It is downloading the zip file of all of the source code that belongs to your particular application. So we now have it on our computer. If you open up File Explorer, go into Downloads, you will notice that we have the uh, my Android test version 2. Um, and for, it's Android test version 2 because it's version 2 of that app. And then version 2 of BuzzTouch and then the code. Um, and if we show, uh, we already have the details. Well, there's a way that you can show the uh, extensions, but just trust me that it's a zip file. You can tell by the little icon here. Um, if we go ahead and unzip it, and let's extract it to a folder of the same name. And so it's gone ahead and done that. Let me go ahead and delete these additional items here since they are part of an earlier tutorial. and we don't need those to confuse the issue. Okay, so now if you come into, really quickly, your folder here, you'll see a number of things, a number of other subfolders uh, that are of interest. Um, the Assets folder here has where you put your any audio for your app, any documents for your app, any uh, video for your app. And this btconfig.txt file is the file that holds all of the configuration information for your app. So that's a pretty important one. And if you come in here to uh, res, you will see a number of folders here. And these are where a lot of the images go for your app. Uh, so in particular, res drawable is where you're going to put a number of your images. If you have uh, background images and things, things of that nature. Uh, these HDPI, LDPI, and MDPI are for different resolutions depending on the uh, types of devices that you're designing for. Uh, you have a layout doc. Uh, folder which has all the information on how to lay out particular screens and you have a values folder now sometimes we'll people talk about res values strings uh, dot XML and that's um, where you go to put like your Google Maps API key and uh, things of that nature so that is oh, actually let's show you one more thing and if you go into source com Android test now this is where all of the Java files are that are related to your particular app, um, and it includes, uh, you know, different things and different uh, plugins and things that you have. So these are all the types of files related to the app itself. So um, why don't we go ahead and bring us up in Eclipse? So open up Eclipse. And let's, let's give it a second to start up. And we are doing this totally from scratch, so there are bound to be some errors, which is a good thing. And hopefully we can walk through those. So we have Eclipse up and running. Uh, notice that there's nothing in here at all at the moment. So the way that I do this, and this is just one of a number of ways to do it, is I come up here to File. I do an Import. Pick Android. There's actually two options, and I've done both. And recently... For some reason, 
uh, general existing projects into Workspace has not been working for me. So I have switched over to Android, existing Android code into Workspace. Uh, that seems to work better and more frequently and more reliably lately. So pick that, hit next. It's going to ask you for the source of your Android project. So hit browse and um, see if I can remember where downloads is. So browse to the folder that it's at. Now here's the root folder of our project. This is the folder that holds all those other folders that we were talking about. If you click on that, it'll expand it and then it'll show you all those other folders that's underneath it. But you want to keep the root of that folder highlighted and hit OK. And so now it'll tell you that this is the project that it's that it's brought in. So go ahead and hit finish. And it's now importing it into Eclipse and doing this little thing, setting up the APIs and all, the, all that kind of stuff. So if you look down here at the right hand corner, you'll see it's building the workspace, doing a whole bunch of things. And it's loading APIs and all this kind of good stuff. So just let it finish. It takes a few moments sometimes. Okay, so that's all. Oh, still doing it. You can't really do anything with it until that is complete. All right, looks like that's done. So you notice we have some red X's here, so that's good. We have some problems we need to resolve. You notice that there are a hundred showing of 102 errors, and a whole bunch of these are geo point can't be resolved to a type. If you look in here, you see a whole bunch of stuff about map views. When you see those, basically the issue is uh, you do not have the Google API selected for this project. So if you come over here to Package Explorer, you can highlight it. You right click on it, go to Properties, and click on Android. And notice this is a list of all the available APIs that you have on your system that you've downloaded in the Android SDK Manager that you can use for your project. And so notice by default the Android 2.2 API is selected, but you don't want that one. You want the Google 2.2 or API 8 in order to use Bus Touch. Um, so you want to make sure that that's selected. Hit Apply, or you can actually just hit OK, whichever one you want to do. Now it goes out and it rebuilds the workspace and everything, and if you noticed, all those problems have disappeared. So that's a good thing. So at this point, you have no problems in here. You have no issues on the console or anything of that nature. Uh, you won't have anything in LogCap because that's for when you actually start up your emulator. Uh, so you are actually at a point that you can now go launch your application in uh, the emulator. And um, let me just show you one other thing before we close here. Um, if for some reason in the console, it talks about having um, to fix the project properties. What you want to do, uh, and, and it says use the Android tools fix project properties. You want to come over again here to Package Explorer, right click, go to Android tools, fix project properties. Um, we'll go ahead and do it. We don't really need to do it because nothing is broke, but that's what you do. And then if you're ever told to clean your project, on the forms. If anybody says you need to clean your project, again, highlight. Actually, you don't have to, but you can highlight the package here. Go up to Project, Clean, and you can either clean all projects, if you know, or you can clean the selected one. Then you can hit OK, and that goes in there, and it just kind of breaks any associations that it's made, you know, from a code perspective. Nothing that you really have to worry about, and um, so a lot of times that'll clean clean up problems. So that. Uh, very quickly is how you bring your project into Eclipse in order for you to uh, work on it. So really quickly, let's give uh, opening it up in an emulator a shot. So now you want to run it. Now you want to actually run it in an emulator. Now if you right click, go to Run As Android Application. And it is going to go out and crank up the emulator that you have created. If you have multiple ones in there, it might ask you which one that you want to use, but we've only created one in here um, from the last tutorial that I did on installing this whole thing. So it's going to go out. It takes a while sometimes. 
down here we have launching BT activity root. So you can see now in the console, this is the Android console. If you hit the DDMS one, you won't see anything. But this is the, let's go back here real quick. This is the Android console. So it is going to give you all kinds of stuff. And basically right here, it says it's waiting for home to be launched. So what, what Eclipse is telling you is it is waiting for the emulator to come up before it can package up your program and send it over. And this oftentimes is where things go awry. So we'll just give it a few moments while the emulator is launching and doing its thing. You can monitor some stuff over here in Logcat. This is where it tells you everything that's going on in the system right now. So Logcat is a good thing to keep an eye on. So I have no idea if this is going to work in a timely fashion or not. This entire portion of the video might get deleted if it doesn't work. But we will give it a shot and see what happens. Okay, that's a good sign. It's getting closer. <clears throat> Notice in the background with Logcat, still lots of good stuff happening. Now from time to time you should check console to see if it's given up. So it's still waiting, that's a good thing. Or sometimes it, it'll give up. It's a slow, slow, slow. There are some things you can do to speed it up, but I have not been very successful on that. Okay, I think we're getting closer. I guess loading lo it's loading some of the things that it needs to run. Ah, so good good news. So home is it was waiting for home. Home is up. It is now uploading the APK, uh, which is the uh, which is the app file, and is now installing it. And. Uh, that's cool. So wait till it says that it's installed. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, then we can watch log cat, see what's going on. <laughs> Still installing. Okay, at this point, um, notice that it has finished launching the activity. And there's, you may or may not get this auto monitor logcat message. You can just go ahead and hit OK. Um, but now, if you switch over to your emulator, you will see that your app is up and running. Um, and in this case, since I've made changes, since I, I did, uh, you know, packaged up the, the source, it's asking, it's saying the content has changed. Would you like to refresh? You can or cannot. So there you go. That is how you get your um, 
your application from the Buzz Touch control panel all the way actually as a bonus here into the emulator. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments or anything, uh, feel free to post them on the uh, form and we will answer them. Um, have a great day and happy app developing.